I was asked to present a program to, today on uh, my recent article, and, and if you haven't got a copy, pick it up before you leave. Uh, the article's name: A Second Look at the Brief History of the Burleson Family in America. And the, the brief history of the Burleson family in America was written by Rufus C. Burleson, Dr. Rufus C. Burleson. Uh, he was the founder of uh, Baylor University, 1885. And uh, I, don't, I don't claim to be smarter than him, but from my research, his history since 1885, what he's written down has pretty much been accepted as fact and retold and retold and retold. The trouble that nobody has went back and researched what he said. Um, from that, it didn't, it didn't take me, after being asked to give the, a report on that, it didn't take me long. Last year's program, if you was here, was about the same thing. It was what was wrong with the brief history. So I won't go over that so much, just a couple items. But I'd like to tell you, uh, the correct facts of the Burleson family in America. And uh, this is what I found, and anybody else can find the same thing because it's in documentation, it's in records, in church records, all kinds of records. The records are there. Um, what Dr. Rufus C. Burleson, what he wrote, nobody, there is no record for 99% of what he said, there's no record at all. There's no documentation at all. Uh, when he wrote his short book, he didn't offer any references then, and nobody has found any sense. So you can take his history for face value. That's what I do. Uh, Edward Burleson was the first Burleson, not just in America, but he's the first. The, the name appears before him, but he's the first one that we know to left descendants. So that's important. So we can, it's not just a name. Uh, we can, he was settled in Suffield, uh, Massachusetts Bay Colony. And it's, it's in uh, Connecticut now after the border change. In 1674. The town was chartered I think in 1672 and he was one of the first 28 families, the charter members of that family, of that town. Uh, the town is a Puritan town by the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Uh, the, you know, everybody living there was Puritans. And that's important because the Puritans were dissenters to the Church of England. They formed their own group. They left England because of their religion, and that's why they came to America. But it, but keep in mind. Edward Burleson was a Puritan. That's our, everybody descends from him in America. The only other group of Burlesons in the world is in Durham County and in that area of England, the east coast of England. So uh, there's no mistake where we came from. We just don't know what ship we came on because there's, there's not but two groups. There's a group in the United States and there's a group in England, uh, major groups. But, uh, in 1674, he is there, and he's recorded dozens of times taking part in the town business. Uh, received land, sold land, bought land, and just regular business. But there's no doubt of who he is, and he is recorded in, in uh, church records and other records. His, the birth of his children are noted, they're recorded, documented. Uh, the birth, where they live, what they've done for a living, and their grandchildren, they're documented, their births, and what they've done. Uh, some of the uh, third generation grandchildren start moving out, uh, start moving to Rhode Island. When I moved to Rhode Island, when I moved to Vermont, a couple of them moved 60, 70 miles west to New York State. and uh, But they started leaving after second and third generation start spreading out. Uh, I don't think there's any Burlesons left now in the town, but but that's that's the route. But the important thing, first three generations are well recorded. There's, there's, you know, there's no doubt. Nobody can argue with the records we have. Uh, 
1704, a grandchild was born to Edward. Uh, third generation, the name was Jonathan Burleson. And, you know, we know where all his brothers and sisters live, uh, who they married, and what happened to them, what type of work they done. Jonathan, all we know of his, is his birthday is recorded in Suffield, Massachusetts. <coughs> in uh, 1749, in Lulenburg County, Virginia, uh, Jonathan Burleson appears in the tax records. And he uh, also appears, he reappears, I should say. And uh, he, uh, there's two other Burlesons there with him in, in Lulenburg, is John and Aaron. Now, Jonathan, like I said, he is documented to have been born in 1704 in Massachusetts. He reappears, he moves, and he reappears in Virginia 40 some years later. So, you know, no doubt it's the same one. It can't be mixed up with anybody else because only the only population was in New England until 1749, until three of them appears in Virginia. Uh, John and Aaron's, we don't know when they were born. Uh, we don't have a birth date for them. The reason being, they were not born in New England. They were not born in the town of Suffield. If they had, their dates would have been recorded. Jonathan's is recorded. See, Jonathan is the father. He was 45 year old when he's in. <coughs> excuse me. He's 45 year old when he's recorded in Virginia, and old enough to have two sons, John and Aaron. And you know, if, if they would have been in born in New England, would have had their birthdays, but they wasn't. Uh, they were in frontiers of Virginia. <coughs> Later on, Aaron and John came out of Lulenburg County and they came to North Carolina. Uh, where they came to North Carolina, uh, they're both reported on Rocky River. Now Rocky River, there's no, in that time, there's no towns or anything, but just the Rocky River area. Uh, Aaron bought land in Cumberland County but in 1760, but three years later, he's, he witnessed a deed on Richardson Creek just south of Rocky River. Uh, John shows up what Stanley County today. Uh, we don't have a date, but James Little mentioned buying land from John Burleson when he, one of his first properties that he bought. And uh, James Little w left his will in 17, 1840. But you know, it was early on, so we don't have exact date when John was here, but uh, in that area that he is, where he sold the land, if you go down Rainy Ford Road today from Locust, go down the Rocky River, <coughs> it's the land to the left before you get to the river. It's on the bank of the river, but that's where the, the earliest Burleson living in Stanley County, what's Stanley County today, uh, that's where they live. Uh, of course, Isaac appears out this way during the Revolutionary War, 1782. Uh, Aaron, like I say, he's recorded in 1760, 1763 on Richardson Creek here at Rocky River. And by 66, he's moved west to the Broad River, which is uh, Rutherford County today, Cleveland County. And from there on, he moves west. You know, his kids moved to Tennessee, to Alabama, to Texas most of the Texas Burlesons from that line. But uh, apparently John stayed here. Uh, in 1776, uh, we, we, don't, we don't know what happened to John, but he is recorded here. But in 1776, his other Burlesons started appearing, young men coming of age. Uh, 1776, Isaac, our Isaac, we all descend from Isaac. Uh, he member of the uh, Clear Creek Militia from Mecklenburg County, which is just from Rainy Ford Road. If you go, if you cross the bridge in Union County, you're in the Clear Creek Militia District. So it's, it's you know just across the river, and uh, 
different counties and all, but that at one time that was Mecklenburg County. But uh, Isaac shows up there in 1776. Uh, Jesse Burleson shows up in 1776. He joins the 4th North Carolina Regiment. Uh, David, Isaac's brother, we know they're brothers. Um, he shows up in 1778 on record in writing, so we know what it is. But there's also a Moses, a James, and another Aaron that shows up in those three or four year period. And we don't, they're just on record one time, so we don't know what happened to them. So they could be other sons of John, or they could be a brother to John and Aaron. We, we just don't know. We don't have enough records to know at this time. But, <coughs> but they disappear. Uh, and that, that brings us to, to Isaac. And that's far as I want to take you down, because the rest of it's, you know, which line, which family member you're from. But uh, has a, and, and the main part, part is, everything I've said can be documented by records. Uh, if you go back and read the brief history of the Burleson family by Dr. Rufus, none of it, none of it's documented. And to me, it's half the names were made up, three-fourths of them. He just made up, fit his line in somewhere. But uh, I can prove that. How many people got a smartphone? I know you young kids have. With you, you got internet in here. Look, look up uh, Google Aaron Burleson of Wales. Aaron one of Wales, and that's that's who he uh, Rufus says is the founding father of all the Southern Burlesons in the United States. See what you get. And I want while you're doing that, I will tell everybody there is no record for that guy ever existed. And, you know, we, we have never found a, a Burleson living in Wales. And it's, uh, you know, I thought, well, some people say, well, maybe he didn't live in Wales, maybe he lived in England, they just took the ship from Wales. But Dr. Rufus says we are all of Welsh origin, which means Edward and his Aaron that he's adding in. But uh, there's never been a, record of a Burleson in Wales living there again. Anybody got the internet? But uh, what what uh, Dr. Rufus wrote was uh, all, all Burleson's America originate from two brothers, Sir Edward Burleson, who settled in Jesuit City, Connecticut in 1716 and Aaron Burleson of Wales, who settled in North Carolina in 1726. Now that's what, that's his history. Aaron Burleson of Wales. It, it gives you a date, gives you wife's name, gives you children's name, gives all that. But the trouble with all that, there's no record of him ever existing. And if you go look for another site that's next to it, you'll have different dates and different children. No. Look, look at the next one that you find, next option for that, and they'll give you another date and another place he was born. Nobody, nobody can... Nobody can document him ever living. There is no such person. <coughs> Which is a, it's an internet miracle that people can find five or six different information for the same thing. And nobody can prove he ever existed. But the trouble, and all that dates back to Dr. Rufus Burleson, 1885. And the, uh, his brief history was a collection of the speeches that was given at the first national Reunion, Burleson Reunion in New Orleans in 1885. And uh, Dr. Rufus had his speeches. Uh, Solomon Stevens Burleson had his. He was from the Northern Branch. Uh, Thomas Sanford, Samford from uh, Georgia, he gave his part. And they were all put together in, in, uh, in the book. But, uh, but you know, when, when you come up with 
ten different answers to one same question. And can't can't be but one right. But in this case, none of them's right because you know there is no documentation for Aaron. Uh, the uh, Rufus said his the Sir Edward. He pronounced it. Or he spelled it Sir Edward, uh, Edward, as he was a knight of the realm. Well, I said before, Edward lived. He was a charter member of the. Puritan town. No Puritan can be a knight. I mean, you know, the knight serves at the king's choice, you know. He's his pick man. No dissenter to the Church of England could be a knight. So that, you know, they can throw that out of the book to start with. And it's, he was silly to write that because he didn't know the information at all. And uh, the uh, the real Edward Burleson, he's, he was a fax weaver. He worked with his hands. Uh, that's what the town record shows. Uh, he says 1716. All town documents said he was there in 1674. So he's wrong again. I don't know where he gets these numbers from, but he's wrong again. And then he talks about his Aaron one coming from Wales. There is no record for such man, so I you know, just throw him out. Don't forget him. Uh, The, uh, there, from my line, from the genealogy line that I gave you, I can make a connection from Edward. His grandson was left New England and came to Virginia, and then, I don't know if he came, but his sons came on to North Carolina. So and that's the line we descend from. Uh, there wasn't an Aaron that came 1726 and couldn't find his Knight brother, so he sailed in Buncombe County, North Carolina. That's what Rufus wrote, uh, 1726. Well, the county of Buncombe wasn't created until 1791, not not 1726. Uh, you know, silly. I don't know why a scholarly man like Dr. Rufus would use figures like that, but you know, that's just common sense. Uh, he just didn't know what he's talking about. Uh, he also wrote that this Aaron that came from Wales had seven sons. By the time of the Revolutionary War, he had seven sons, and four or five of them was killed during the Revolution. Well, the, the names he give, he gives a Jesse as a son, and Jesse, we don't he, he is a Rocky River Burleson. He, he enlisted in the Revolutionary War here on Rocky River, Montgomery County, and Anson County. He's got records there. He joined the 4th Regiment, Continental Soldier. He had militia service. He's well documented here. And he lived here on, on Richardson Creek until 18, or I'm sorry, 1786, and he sold out and went to Georgia. But, you know, he would... Can't prove who his parents are, but he's got. He he should be a parent, a child of John. That he should be, because that's the timeline. But he's definitely a Rocky River Burleson. He he can't be one of Doctor Rufus's story about his Aaron, and he listed his seven sons. Don't include anybody from Rocky River. It don't include Isaac. It don't include James, Aaron. Uh, Daniel, uh, David, Jesse, he don't include any of those. He just leaves them out. Well, they existed. We know they existed. We're here because they existed. But Dr. Rufus didn't allow for that at all. And, you know, he says the true line came from Aaron, uh, but, but there is no Aaron. So how can you prove him wrong? But here we are. Uh, the uh, the name of the sons that got killed, none of them ever existed. If they did, they, they may have. They all may have twin brothers and twin sisters and five fingers, I don't know. But there's no record of any of the names he gave. No record anywhere. So I can't say they didn't exist, but nobody can prove they did. 
because there's no record for them. Uh, I got one more example of uh, how honest Rufus is. I told you that Dr. Solomon Stevens, Burleson, uh, he was one of the co-organizers of the First National Reunion. He was a, a preacher. He's a reverend, doctor. Uh, from the time he got married, he moved. He was born in New York and moved to Vermont and married in Vermont. And from there, he, he married and became a uh, missionary to the Oneida Indians in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Spent the rest of his life there. Uh, he's very successful, you know, very well known. Uh, he, uh, at the reunion, 1885 reunion, he read a letter from his brother. And his, his brother was uh, George Burleson, and he was living in Vermont at the time. But the letter was about his uh, Civil War experience. And uh, what he wrote, and and. Solomon read the letter to the reunion. Uh, Dr. Rufus heard the letter verbatim as it was read. He had to have a copy because Rufus printed the letter in his history, brief history. He printed it. So he had it in his hand. He knew exactly what it was. But the, uh, but the letter, uh, letter from George Burleson instructs his brother Solomon to say, uh, if you in New Orleans, if you meet the private John Burleson that served in the Louisiana Tigers on uh, uh, April the 2nd, uh, 1865, in front of Peters, at the battle in front of Petersburg, George captured this Confederate Burleson, turned out to be a Burleson prisoner. And uh, he said, uh, said, shake his hand for him because he would like to shake his hand himself again. You know, let bygones be bygones. He would like to see him. And it, it was an interesting story. And uh, Dr. Rufus got a hold of the story. For one reason, he was saying this is the first time the northern branch and the southern branch met each other and knew of each other, which may be, you know, don't know. But the Rufus, uh, the real story the real story was, go back and check the records, okay. Uh, George Burleson enlisted at age of 16. He is, he is my, one of my heroes, and a Yankee heroes in the Civil War. Uh, he enlisted at 16 year old. He uh, advanced through the ranks. He served throughout the war. He, he joined the start of the war. He rose to the rank of captain. And uh, if you know the history of the General Lee in the, the South, uh, General Lee was surrounding Pitts, uh, Petersburg, defending Petersburg. And the war was, everybody knew the war was lost. You know, he was pinned down in the trenches and all it took was one more attack and the war was over. Well, the attack came, but the uh, Captain George Burleson, 21 year old, he was chosen to lead, be one of the lead companies in the spearhead that's going to crash through the line. Uh, the, the point of contact where there's going to attack, you can go to Pamplin Park today, stand in the same trenches that Confederate soldiers stood in. It, it's still there, it's, you know, it hadn't been changed. But the attack came in a hundred yard wide area and it was defended by the Confederates in that trench Every 10 paces, there's a Confederate soldier with a single shot rifle. Every 10 paces. The attack led by George Burleson, he was at the front of 12,000 men behind him in a V shape, going to penetrate that. 12,000, and you got your nearest help is 20 feet away. You know. But uh, George makes the attack. And he's rewarded for it, he's wounded, and he's rewarded for it, recognized for his valor. Uh, I've done a little research on that, and there was no Louisiana units where that breakthrough came. It was North Carolina units from Stanley County to 28th North Carolina. 
There was one Burleson that was captured on that day, April 2nd, uh, Evan Burleson. Lived a mile from here, just across Red Hill. He was captured that day. He served the whole war too, and he, he was captured that day. So. And the Louisiana units were five miles away, up towards Richmond. So everybody's tried to find out who this Confederate soldier was, and nobody never can find a Louisiana soldier, Burleson soldier, can't find it, that was captured that day. But I found, I know where the breakthrough came. The, the, the federal records show that that's where Evan was captured. Anyhow, but uh, Captain George Burleson is, is you know, surely, surely a hero, and he should be to us too. But uh, could you imagine the courage that Evan had to have? Stand in a, standing in a trench waiting for 12,000 people coming at you. So there's more than one hero there. But uh, read, the, uh, read the article you got. Anytime you look at your computer and Google Aaron Burleson, one of Wales, make up your own mind. Just keep in mind that if anybody tells you they descend from Aaron, one of Wales, they don't know what they're talking about. There is, there is no such person. If they say they, if we descend from uh, Edward, from, from Massachusetts Bay Colony, 1674, now you're on the right track. But uh, I'll, fin I'll end up with that.